a little uh, nugget that I found when I was Googling your name. Uh, you're not to be confused with Scott Young Guns Jorgensen, who is a retired American bantamweight mixed martial artist. Little yeah, we often get we often get confused for each other, but. <laughs> All right, hello and honors program. I'm Riley. I'm here with Dr. Scott Jorgensen on our Zoom, uh, our special uh, quarantine edition Zoom interview here. Um, so a little background on Dr. Jorgensen uh, that I acquired from his LinkedIn. Um, he graduated from the Medical College of Wisconsin in 1986. He completed the residency at Indiana University Medical Center in Indianapolis. And then he started with his Madison Medical Affiliates in 1990. And I believe that's still where you're at today. Is that correct? There are little changes in there. Okay. Okay. Keep, well, I'm, I'm definitely still with Madison Medical. Hi, everybody. Uh, and call me Dr. J. It's all good. If you want, I'd go from there. Uh, I actually did, that's correct, uh, internal medicine at uh, Indiana University. And then I did a chief resident year in 89, 90. Oh, okay. And then I started solo practice. I hung a shingle uh, in Mequon in 1990. So I hung a shingle and did solo practice for eight years and merged my practice into Madison Medical in 1998. Oh, okay. Um, and that's how that worked. I see. We're, now we're a group of 60 doctors. Wow. All right. A little uh, nugget that I found when I was Googling your name. Uh, you're not to be confused with Scott Young Guns Jorgensen, who is a retired American bantamweight mixed martial artist. Little yeah, we often get we often get confused for each other, but <laughs> <laughs> and then obviously with the, with the Dr. J nickname, also not to be confused with Julius Irving, right? Right, because I can't use my left hand. can't use my left hand. I can't jump very much. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. So, could you start off with just a little kind of summary of what? internal medicine is, I guess, or maybe what you do, and then we can kind of talk about different options that you have within internal medicine. Sure. Uh, internal medicine is the practice of uh, adult medicine, and it's uh, preventative care. So we dive into preventative care, and then making diagnosis, and then and, and treating patients uh, for whatever their diagnosis might be, and following them uh, over a long period of time. The so-called internal diseases is a little bit true, but a little bit not. You like to talk about treating the whole person. <clears throat> I always tell people like, I can feel, figure out if you need your appendix out, something like that, but you don't want me to take it out. You want some of my cronies to do the surgery for that. But internal medicine, I started usually age 18, but a few down to age 16 and up. My, my eldest patient just passed away at 105 years old about a couple months ago. So it's a wide range. And it's everything from preventative healthcare, sports physicals, uh, wellness visits, to uh, diabetes, stroke, cancer, cardiovascular issues, certainly some orthopedic things that are uh, outpatient variety uh, type of things, but then I'll defer to my orthopedic uh, specialty pals as well. So a little bit of everything. So how, how did you like first become kind of interested in internal medicine? Uh, Good question. I was interested, like everybody in med school, I was sort of interested in everything. And then when you do it, you say that, well, I like that better or I like it less than some of the other things. And then some of it's just your exposures and what happens uh, at the time. I remember liking uh, pediatrics, for example, uh, but I did some pediatric oncology and pure pediatric neurology and found that a little tough with little kids. We want them to be uh, going. And so I respect those people completely, but I didn't want to see myself with those kids. Uh, I did some psychiatry and uh, believe me in internal medicine, you do a lot of psychiatry in the office on a day-to-day -day basis, but to do it full time, hundred percent of the time, uh, what certainly interesting, but not what I wanted to do. In fact, I was a psych minor in college, so okay. it was interesting. And then same thing with the surgical things, uh, subspecialties. I, I enjoyed those and learning about those, but I didn't picture myself in the operating room uh, per se. Right. So it's just all the exposures and the people you meet along the way that influence you as well has a lot to do with it. Can you describe kind of like a day in the life, like a typical day as an internal medicine doc? Sure. And there are days, there are internal medicine docs who walk, uh, get to the office, 
start seeing patients and then when they're done, they go home. And that's perfectly great because it's busy as heck. I mix it up a little bit. I do a couple other things in the, in the midst of my week. Um, I also, I have an office and I'm seeing patients full-time. That's my full-time practice. Uh, I also do some physicals for union uh, guys. So I, with health dynamics. So that's uh, some fun for me to just be a little exposed outside of my office and do physicals on these healthy guys uh, and trying to, and that's more of the preventative side of yeah. what I do. Um, I am also a medical director at a nursing facility, a subacute facility across the street from me. And I've been doing that pretty much since day one. And it's a broader experience than for my private practice. I'm not a geriatrician. There are subspecialists to do geriatrics. But it's uh, nursing home and skilled patients, but also it's the subacute patients. So post-op total hip replacements, strokes, uh, knee replacements, maybe sick, really sick in the hospital for 10, 12 days and need to have some rehab before they can go home. And then it drops, so that's the subacute level. And then we go uh, also at the facility have assisted care uh, areas, dementia units, or what we call memory units now. And then there's also independent uh, areas there too. And those folks, it's just like if they're living in a condo or an apartment, and those people that are patients of mine would actually come to my office as opposed to me going to them. Some of the assisted care and the memory unit folks, uh, I would go to them. Right. But in the office day to day, I'm seeing any number of, uh, it could be 10 or 12 patients up to 16 or 18 patients a day, I guess, depending on what we're seeing them for. It could be wellness, could be preventative care, could be pre-ops for surgery coming up that they need to be cleared by me. Okay. Follow-up uh, uh, hypertension, follow-up diabetes, uh, problems, abdominal pain, fever, you name it, and, and they come in. Yeah, okay. So what would you say, like how often are you diagnosing something versus them coming in with a diagnosis and you kind of treating that reactive? Uh, that's a good question. And in fact, uh, a lot of times, you know, you're, you've made diagnosis and now you're following. If somebody's diabetic, they're diabetic kind of forever, right? And so you want to keep them well in steed and under control and you're making sure they're behaving and their kidney function's okay and their cardiovascular risk is okay and so on. But some people will come in with new symptoms and new complaints and you're trying to scratch your head and, f and figure out what's going on with them. And that's a lot of the fun of it. The people I see, uh, also the, the variety of people I see, young and old and men and women and, and different races. And, and that's, I like that a lot because the variety of it. Do you have like a favorite and least favorite part of internal medicine? It could be, it could be anything, I guess. Uh, Absolutely, I do. And we touched on it a little bit. My favorite part is uh, the people, no question, and the variety of people. And uh, developing relationships as you go yeah. has been tremendous for me. I've, I've, yeah, and there's always a, the separation. You have to be careful about who's a friend and who's not a friend kind of a thing and treat them all uh, similarly. And I always say I would want to treat my friend like this or, you know, if you were my mother, what would I do? And I, ugh, people ask me that all the time. Yeah. Um, that would definitely be my... Uh, most favorite part. The stuff that I don't like is similar for everybody. It's like I make a living based on my notes. And so I have to be really good about my notes and the computer work. You know what that's like as a scribe. It's got to be exactly so. And if you don't include this part and that part, you know, uh, it's not a complete note. If you had to do it all over again, would you, would you still choose internal medicine? And is there anything kind of you would change within that? Would you still go to like your solo practice or in the private practice, that kind of thing? Uh, I would definitely do private practice again, uh, but I would not be against some of these other options that we have. I, I did a lot of VA uh, work as a, re as a student through MCW and then as a resident too. Love the VA. Uh, a lot of stories there that we probably will do off camera. Uh, but, uh, really, you got to be a doctor. If you were a, su a junior in med school, you were the doctor for these guys. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, but solo practice, no, I would never do that now. And it's, it's a different time as we yeah. talked about before. Yeah. Uh, to go into internal medicine, I like all the things that I like about it, I really like. Uh, back in the day, it's like I thought, oh, I don't want to be in cardiology. And it's like that's, uh, you know, I would do, uh, <laughs> um, I would, I'm terribly interested in it and I like it all day long. But even cardiology and all these other subspecialties have evolved in 20, 30 years now for me. Mm -hmm. So it's like, 
people doing cardiac caths all day long and uh, angioplasties and stents and what have you, they're still being done. You don't want me doing that because I don't have the steady hand. Um, but it's not as much. There's other options. There's medications. There's different procedures that people can do. Um, so that's different. Everything's everything's different that way. Yeah. I didn't know as much. You know, there weren't computers and electronic uh, records when we when I started medical school and practice. So that's been a big change that guys like you would take for. You know, I'm not saying you take it for granted, but it's like you grew up with this. Yeah. yeah. So it makes it a little simpler for that. For that, and I'm used to it now. But I, but I had to get used to it. So it's a big adjustment uh, for me. And I like to think that I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, okay. It, and last one. Is there any like particular cases or patients, obviously with st stay in accordance to HIPAA, but is there any kind of things you'll never forget? Uh, absolutely. That's true. Um, and maybe if we do this again, I can come up with three or four and, and make make it a little more interesting about how their presentation and what have you, but there are definitely those. And those are the ones that if you see a hundred cases of this, it's gotta be that, um, you know, it's, it's the atypical presentation. I was always told, uh, for example, that uh, internal medicine doctors usually see about one case of pheochromocytoma, which is an, a tumor on your adrenal gland that causes extra hormones and, and problems that you might see one in your career. Well, I saw two in the first four years of my career, and I thought, okay, good, I'm done. I'd never have to look for this ever again because I'm done. And I'm like, but yet I'm still looking for it. I'm always searching for it, and some docs can go without seeing it. But there are a lot of a lot of cases, a lot of a lot of funny situations, a lot of sad situations, um, um, and that's the part that drives me every day. Yeah looking for the fun, looking f to help people. You know, I've helped people die and, and doctors do that. And, and that is, uh, it's, I say rewarding is the right term because it's not about me, it's about them, but trying to help a family through something like that. Mm -hmm. It's uh, nice to be able to contribute. A person has to go into internal medicine or into family practice and, uh, and I was happy to do that and be done. Mm -hmm. But to go on to do a subspecialty, they have to have the basic training before they can move on. So if somebody's interested in being a cardiologist, gastroenterologist, endocrinologist, rheumatologist, pulmonary, critical care, ICU, and I'm sure I'm not listing them all, but yeah. um, you have to get the basic of the primary care rotations and, and uh, certification done first. So if somebody's thinking in the back of their mind, it's like they want to be a, a heart doctor or they want to do colonoscopies great and we need those people but they need to go through uh, family practice or internal medicine rotation first mm -hmm. and and that's good so you get the broad exposure yeah. and then you zero in from there I'm talking about how just there's a great exposure that you get in internal medicine and in family practice rotations and and, and residency and then you move on to these subspecialties if that's your interest yeah